In this chapter, Caleb and Jeff are building Mando's rifle and the mouse droid. Welcome to Chapter 7 of our Mandalorian series. Over the past couple months, Hacksmith Industries has been piecing together our very own Mandalorian suit. In Chapters 1 through 6, we built the flamethrower, the blaster and the spear, the helmet, Baby Yoda's cradle, the jetpack, and the grapple gun. We're getting so close to the epic finale where I don the suit for the first time and put it to the test. You definitely don't want to miss this. Now it's taken a ton of work and ate up most of my spare time, but I'm almost finished with the armor. That build is coming up soon and will be available early exclusively to members, so stay tuned for that. If you're not already a member and want early access to that video and future videos, click the link below. And if you've been enjoying this series, why not grab one of our limited edition Hacklorian t-shirts, available from Hacksmith.store. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, they didn't have Roombas. Instead, they had the MSE-6, more commonly known as the Mouse Droid. Is this janitor on wheels an integral part of the Mandalorian suit? No, but as our old business cards used to say, sometimes we do things for shits and giggles. Look, it, it's cool, so we're doing it. But much like in the series itself, the MSC-6 is but a small part of this chapter. The main focus will be Mando's iconic rifle. Aside from the ability to evaporate Jawas, the rifle looks totally awesome and really helps push the whole spaghetti western style of the show even more. Since he did such an awesome job on the spear in Chapter 2, we're going to be turning this design and build over to Caleb while I finish up Mando's armor. I'm going to start with this. It's just a simple flare gun, but in our galaxy, that's as close as we can get to a blaster. As we learned in Chapter 2, this will shoot a high energy, very hot projectile, which is excellent for our purposes. The only problem is, this is blaster sized. I need to make it rifle sized. To do that, I'm going to have to design some parts and build it up. And to make sure it looks just like Mando's Amban rifle, I'm going to need to go find some reference images. We aren't going to overcomplicate this mouse droid. My plan is to buy an RC car, tear the top off, and mount the new chassis on it. Easy, right? Let's go on a field trip. Right around the corner, we have Flightcraft. They're a local hobbyster that's been around for 36 years. They have everything ranging from airplanes, boats, helicopters, and most importantly for me, a ton of RC cars. There are three things I'm looking for from the RC car. First, street wheel compatibility. The mouse droid has pretty slick tires. Street wheels, as opposed to knobby tires, are closer to this aesthetic. Second is 1 10th scale. We will be able to resemble the dimension and the size of the mouse droid as close as possible in real life. Lastly, it's two wheel drive. I have concluded that two wheel drive is more than sufficient to get the mouse droid moving. And honestly, four-wheel drive is overkill and way more expensive. I've decided I'm going with the Traxxas Slash. It is two-wheel drive and one-tenth scale. It does unfortunately come with knobby tires, but it is still street wheel compatible. Fortunately, they do have street wheels in stock, so I'll get a set. Let's ring it up and head back to the shop. People are constantly asking us, how do we get started in engineering? Which is why we are thrilled to partner with KiwiCo. So thrilled that we're giving our audience 50% off their first monthly crate. Sometimes, when you're small, it's easier to think big. That's why KiwiCo creates hands-on projects and toys designed to expose kids to concepts in STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. They believe that the small lessons learned today can mean world-changing ideas tomorrow. Each monthly crate comes with all the supplies needed, detailed kid-friendly instructions, plus an educational magazine for further learning. With eight subscription lines, each catering to a different age group and skill set, there's something for everyone. I may not have kids myself, but after completing a few of these crates, I can't think of a better way to get interested in making things. Check out kiwico.com slash hacksmith50 for 50% off your first crate. Any crate! Just click the link in the description below, plus you'll be helping to support the channel. So 
I made a quick design of the chassis and solid works and discovered that if I use the metal I was planning to, it's gonna weigh over 40 kilograms. And well, this car is tough. I'm not sure it's that tough. So we're gonna have to do some tests. So I stacked 40 pounds on this car, which is approximately 18 kilograms. And as you can see, the suspension is almost bottoming out. Let's see if it works. So it actually does work, but 18 is nowhere near 45. Let's try to stack more weights on it. Oh my god, this is heavy. <laughs> 90 pounds, just above 40 kilos. Fingers crossed. I guess a 40 kilo chassis is out of the question. This thing won't even budge. I'm gonna have to use a lighter material. I managed to find a bunch of really great reference images so I can see the gun from all sorts of different angles. I've broken the design into its basic components and I've modeled each of those in SolidWorks. Mando's rifle has a removable scope. I'm not an optical physicist, so we just bought this on Amazon. There's a lot of parts in this assembly. So before pulling the trigger, on the build, I'm going to make a prototype out of cardboard. Cardboard prototype is all done, everything fits, and it's to scale. All right, Jeff, how's the mouse droid coming? Not too bad. I just bought a 110 scale RC car and I made a design of the mouse droid based on the scale of this car. It's gonna be made out of sheet metal. I'll be bending and welding the side panels and then I'll set it on the RC car. Isn't that gonna be a bit heavy though? Yes, initially I was planning to use a 1 8 uh, mild steel. 1 8 mild steel? Yep. And I realized that it's gonna weigh over 40 kilograms. <laughs> So I had to make a new plan. I decided to use 20 gauge steel and that will only weigh about 15 kilograms. This car can handle it. Yeah, you did some tests to make sure the suspension. Yeah, I put some weights on it. I put all 90 pounds on it. It didn't move. I put 40 pounds, which is slightly above 15 kilograms, but close enough, it worked. So how exactly are you gonna mount the sheet metal onto this? Well, I'm glad you asked. So if you see this, you can notice the four spokes on the RC car. So okay. what I made in the design is a mounting bar that goes across the chassis and oh, that okay. bar will just sit on top of here and I'll put a cap on top and it should be able to handle the weight of the entire chassis. Awesome. And these are fairly strong? Uh, they're rigid enough. It handled 90 pounds, so it should be no problem with 15 kilograms. All right. Awesome. Are you going to be able to drift this mouse road? Of course. Ooh. Now, Caleb, what do you have over here? What I have here is a CAD model, cardboard aided design. This is the back half of the Amben rifle. We got the stock and the receiver. And then I guess this is the barrel? Yeah, that's gonna be the barrel. This is gonna become the prongs at the front. Ah, oh, okay. So I'm also gonna be doing some woodworking. Woodworking? Lay out the cardboard that on the wood. That is something the Hacksmith channel hasn't done in years. Trying to make it, make it real. And in a galaxy far, far away, they still haven't figured out 3D printers, so we're gonna use real wood. The receiver is all gonna be made out of folded mild steel. So that's why I wanted to make the cardboard model to see how it folds and comes together. And I see we're using a flare gun again as a base, which is awesome because it looks like a blaster. How about the reloading mechanism? Can you tell me how you're gonna manage to do that? Yeah, so we have this metal plate and it's gonna go directly over top of the barrel. This hole is gonna have a bracket welded to it where I can attach a string. The other end of the string, it's gonna be attached to a triangular portion on the barrel that's gonna act sort of like a pump action. So okay. when you pull it forward, it'll put some force here, and that'll be enough to crack the barrel open. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise the whole thing would have to crack open like a, like a flare gun. But yeah. that would be kind of silly because it's a rifle, not a, not a shotgun. Yeah. I like it. Okay, these designs look awesome. Let's make it real.
I have all the pieces for the rifle's receiver cut out, and now I need to bend them, just like I did with the cardboard model. When that's done, I'm going to be welding it all together. So I've got all of these parts welded, and this is enough to have it cosmetically looking pretty good. That looks a little bit more like an Amban rifle. Once we have the barrel cut, we'll be able to align everything and weld it all together. This is the base of the mouse droid. As you can see, there are cutouts where the wheels will fit in. By bending it, I'll be able to reduce the manufacturing time significantly since I wouldn't have to weld the side panels together. Once we're done bending all the remaining pieces, I'll be able to stack them up together and weld the seams to create the shape of the mouse droid chassis. I've never welded before. Here goes nothing. This is our barrel. The flare gun cracks open to reload the flares. So I've cut this on an angle so that when it cracks, it can just pull away from the bottom of the barrel and come back together, no problem. However, I don't want to leave my finger in there while I'm welding. So I'm going to use a drill bit with the same inner diameter as this pipe so that I can keep the drill bit inside and align these two pieces as I weld. So it turns out, welding sheet metal that's less than a millimeter thick, it really isn't my thing. So I got James to help me out. I'm no expert at TIG welding either, but I have been getting quite a bit of practice with all the Mando armor I've been doing, so it might be an adventure. Why don't we trade spots and I'll show you a few techniques that will hopefully help. All right, so the first thing I want to show you is an easy way of tacking it together into the general shape which will then let you take your time with actually filling in the whole seam. What you actually want to do, you're going to push the two pieces together, masks down, and you're going to do a really quick tack, just like that. And you don't need to use too much power, so I'm not even pushing down on the pedal that much. Now, what we can do is we can actually bend this up gently into the angle we want. Just like that. So why don't we try doing a bit of a seam weld on the inside. When you step on the pedal slightly, do you just wait for the metal to melt or? Yeah, so basically what you want to do is when you're starting your puddle, you're watching it. And it's important that the puddle's forming on both sides of the metal. Yep. And when that happens, that's when you want to start dragging the puddle down very slowly. Why don't you try doing a little bead here. Do you have a puddle? I do have a puddle. All right, start moving. All right, let's stop for a sec. All right, not terrible. Uh, kind of tough. I mean, people go to school for years for welding, <laughs> and we're just trying to pick it up <laughs> like in our part-time, yeah. <laughs> so why don't we try one of the actual pieces? Step up the power. Mando's rifle has two metal prongs that protrude off the end. They are what make this design stand out from an ordinary rifle. I made two prongs out of stainless steel and welded them onto this pipe so that it can slide easily over the barrel. Now the interesting part is I'm going to oxidize the surface of the stainless steel to give it a multicolored shimmering effect just like it has in the show. This is where the fun begins. Well, it looks like we're getting some color here. So see, we got some blue on the edge, right where my flame's pointing.
That looks excellent. All right. That's quite a few tacks. Quite a few, yep. Hopefully we can just bend her up. It's in shape now, yep. and we just need to fill in the gaps. We might need a bit of help from the team because there's a lot of welding left, but I think if we work together, we should be able to get this all welded, and we'll be off to the races with our very own mess droid. Sounds like a good plan to me. All right, let's start the montage. In the show, there's a smaller pipe underneath the barrel. Top welded, bottom welded, time to grind. All the metal working's done, let's paint it. Edges are smooth, back to welding to connect the pieces. For the stock, I'm going to be doing some woodworking. Stupid mouse droid. Husky Jawas. We got our droid. Sneaky scavengers. You take the one on the left, I'll take the one on the right. Most definitely. Between the blaster and the rifle, this Mando project is packing a lot of heat. And the mouse droid? Well, like I said, why not? But we all know there's more to the Mandalorian than just firepower. And in Chapter 8, you'll see what we mean. And if you just can't wait, become a member now for early access. This is the way. <laughs>